Second like why? But I am, of course, just waiting for the laptop to catch up. And actually, I haven't even pulled it up on my phone. So give me a second while I do that real quick here. Hi and welcome. There we are on my laptop. All right, it's muted. Okay. So welcome. Glad you guys could join me today. I see some of you already in comments. Hi, friends. Let me get this pulled up on my phone real quick. Soon enough, Heather is going to be here. Uh, and she'll be moderating in the comments. There she is. I see her now. All right. So I've got this up on my phone. So then I'll be able to see um, comments, as many comments as I can once I flip everything around. All right. Well, hi. See, all right. I see friends are starting to find us. So we are happy that you are here today. Thank you. Hi, Donna. And thank you, Cherry. I am doing well. I appreciate that. All right. Well, sorry, guys. I have a little bit of my, my dry eye syndrome is acting up in my left eye. So if you notice me kind of bothering it or if it looks a little puffy, that's why. <laughs> All right. Hi, friends. Hey, Tabitha. I'm glad you're getting to watch us on the lunch break. Thank you for spending your lunch with us. It's really, uh, really lovely of you. All right. Well, while people are still filtering in and finding us here, I uh, wanted to go over just a couple of things that we normally go over. Uh, first and foremost, welcome. Um, if you're new here, we would love for you to let us know. I may not see you. Uh, may not see you say that once I get going on the creating, but um, Heather is here in the comments, and I know that many of the people that um, catch our lives each week would love to welcome you as well. So this is a big blanket welcome to everyone, whether you're just finding us and finding our lives, or if you've been watching for uh, years now. Welcome and hi, and I am glad that you're here. Um, and then uh, also we give away a $15 gift card code at the end of every live stream. Heather, who is the name behind the Pink Fresh Studio, um, or she's the person behind the Pink Fresh Studio name in the comments, um, she picks that winner just winner just randomly at the end of uh, the live. So the way to gain entries into uh, the giveaway is first and foremost just already doing what you're doing. Um, you are uh, chatting in the live chat, so just continue to do that. Um, you can comment. You can ask questions. I may not see every question, but Heather catches as many as. If you can. Sometimes comments really fly. So if we miss it, just um, ask it again. Or also a lot of times uh, your fellow viewers are also really good about answering as well. Now, another way to gain an entry into the giveaway is underneath this video somewhere, there's a little arrow and it says the word share next to it. That, and you can share. There's multiple ways that you can share. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can share. Um, you can share to your personal Facebook page, you could share to your Instagram stories. Um, if you have like a crafty email or direct message, um, you can share uh, this there. And then finally, I know there's a lot of crafty groups out there in Facebook and you are definitely free to share um, in one of those groups as long as it follows the rules. There are some that don't really like when live streams get shared. So definitely make sure that you know the rules of the group and only share if they, they're okay with you. Come back here in the comments, let us know you shared and it is an extra uh, entry into the giveaway. So finally, this is not an entry into the giveaway, but something that's really helpful to us both now. And <laughs> thank you, Wendy. <laughs> uh, something that is, um, couple to us now, both now and when uh, upon replay, is if you could give this video a thumbs up. It's just super helpful with the video's reach and getting it out there. So maybe someone will happen upon it while we're live, um, or maybe someone will happen upon it uh, upon replay. And if you're joining us on replay, welcome. I hope that you guys enjoy. I know, you know, I got a little dry eye stuff going on. Heather, poor girl, her back is is bugging her pretty bad. So we're a, we're a kind of a hot mess duo. Today, but we'll get through it. Um, never fear on that. 
Well, I think that's everything that I have to share with you. I know a lot of people are asking about the new ink colors, and currently we are still slated for a September 22nd release, but um, we'll keep you updated if that has to change. Um, so, but everything that I know of right now is that that date is currently the set date. Okay, so um, I think that is everything I have. We're about five minutes in. So we should probably uh, get this camera flipped around and we should probably start creating a card together. So let's do that there with me while I make the camera switch. Okay, there we are. I think we're good. I am just going to wait for my camera to catch up here. And here are, this is what we are going to use today. This is the Humboldt and Grateful product suite. It released a couple months ago, I think. And, um, okay, there we go. Man, it's taken a long time for it to catch up on my phone. My phone must be <laughs> kind of delayed. All right, there we go. Now I can see it on the phone. Perfect. <laughs> right, Heather? Yeah, we're just we're falling apart. We're the same age, so we're going through it all together. All right, so it has cooled off like considerably here in Minneapolis, and uh, I'm just kind of feeling all stuff right now. So I thought that this design really lends itself to um, some fall colors and like a fall feeling of a card. So um, I think that this is going to be really fun. But one thing that I haven't done yet is I actually haven't pulled all of my ink colors. I would I thought. Since I'm gonna use, I'm going to use um, the I'm gonna use ink cubes today because I I am using a, a few colors per stencil, and so I thought I would grab them out. And since we are either going to be coming up soon, uh, we would take a look at these. Someone's asking about the dimensions uh, of the ink cases, Donna. So if you actually go to Studio Essentials. On our website, uh, this is actually already there. They're just listed as sold out, and the dimension the dimensions are already um, in there. Okay, so actually, first and foremost, I'm doing the leaves, and I'm doing leaves in brown. So I'm going to grab my two browns. So today, I'm going to be using dough, or excuse me, warm buff and dough for my leaves, and then the flowers we're going to do in some combinations. So we're gonna use coral reef and passion fruit. We are going to use apricot and persimmon. And then we are also gonna use lemon whip and marigold. So this is my color combo for today, for today's fall card. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to turn out really fun. And yes, thank you, Heather, for grabbing the link here so people can see the dimensions of the cases. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's funny, Sherry. <laughs> so this is my fall color palette. I think it's going to be a really fun one. So let's get ahead because I want to heat emboss this image. So let's, I'm just going to set these off to the side. And let's get going on that part. So this image was designed for uh, mini slimline. I mean, it can be used on any size card but it fits really beautifully on a mini slim line. So um, I grabbed a panel and I will mention, I like to have a little bit of room around my stamped image. So I cut my panel a little bit larger than A2 sized. I cut it, it is uh, four and a quarter by six. So that way I have a little bit more room around the image. You certainly can fit this floral onto an A2 sized panel, but I just like to have that little bit of extra room. So if you like to have that little bit of extra room as well, then I do suggest cutting your panel just a little bit larger. Wendy, they do release super easy from the case. Like that is definitely not a problem at all. Um, they come out super easy, no matter where they're located. It's really easy to get your fingers in there and grab them out. All right, so let's get this guy heat embossed. I'm going to prep my panel with some powder. First things first. I only want that embossing powder to stick where the ink goes. That should be good. So I'm going to this there. 
All right. And let's go ahead and ink up our over barb. Good to see you, friend. So glad you guys are loving the new case. It's it's super beautiful. We're very excited with how it turned out. All right. And I always feel like, well, one, I'm a, a self-proclaimed, I stamp really lightly. So I need a, this a stamping platform so I can double stamp. But I also feel like once you've added the anti-static powder tool to your paper, it really kind of dries it out. And so the ink really kind of soaks in quickly. So I like to get a few good impressions when I'm using embossing ink so that I know I have a nice slow drawing, kind of sticky impression that the embossing powder can stick to. Oh, I grabbed it, so that means we're getting close. For good measure, I'm gonna just do it one more time, just to be safe here. <laughs> the, the big case is super fun, Barb, you're gonna love it. Deb, I have both cases. The one I just showed you is the smaller, it's the 48 piece because uh, currently I just have the 48 ink cubes. So that one I showed you was the smaller one. All right, there we go. All right, I feel good about that. I'm just gonna set this aside. I will clean it later, but I'm not worried if a little bit of embossing ink stays on it for now. So I am going to do just my classic bold today. This is, um, this is Brutus Monroe Gilded. Uh, you can use any gold embossing powder. This just happens to be my preference. I just like the shade of gold that it is once it's heat set. Um, but you can absolutely use any gold. Okay. I think we're good there. All right. Let's see if I can get that a little bit off. Oh, I'm not going to worry about it. It's okay. Must have had a little stray here or a thread. It looks like um, they're already answered, Tabitha, but I apologize. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know a date on the um, the triangle tray or the brass tray. So I, I had thought they were supposed to be here already, but we must have had a little mishap or something. Um, if you sign up, I would suggest signing up for a restock notification. And then um, once we do uh, restock it in our shop, you'll get an email. So you know that um, you uh, can grab it right away. Roxanne, the larger case holds 72 inks, which will be the number of inks we have once we release our new colors. All right, I am going to heat set. So um, this will probably, uh, Zoom will probably mute me. So, but I'll be back once I'm done heat setting. Right, and that's done. And there is my heat embossing. I I missed the name, but somebody asked about what my anti-static um, powder tool is from. It's actually from Tailored Expressions. So um, just for reference, for those that were asking about. Okay, just letting this get nice and, and set here. All right. Well, we will get, I'm going to go into my desk set up a little bit here. 
So the first stencil is le is the leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and get my browns out. Okay. So today we don't feature um, these as much, but I'm actually going to be using our small brushes. Um, these are the little quarter inch brushes. And because the stencil openings were pretty small in this set, I thought that these ones really lent themselves to um, being able to, because I'm going to actually blend a couple of colors into each area. And so using the smaller brushes really allows me to well, uh, have a little bit more control over that. Okay, let's see here. I want to make sure it's still on screen, but still close enough where I feel like I can see what I'm doing. You're welcome, Sherry. Okay, so this is a super affordable stencil set. It's a two-piece set. There's a stencil for the leaves and there's a stencil for the flowers. Now, if you're new to our stencils at all, I'm gonna find some glare here. Uh, in the upper left corner, we have been stencil number etched. You don't always have to do our stencils in the exact order we put them. You're free to uh, change that up if you need to. This is just a two-piecer. So really, I don't feel the need to change that up. And then you'll notice that there are guidelines in each corner, little grid marks. Now, those grid marks are for when you're using stencils alone. When you're using them with a stamp for feed embossed or foiled image, that is when uh, you just line the stencil openings up to the uh, image itself. So you'll just ignore those little tick marks and um, you will use the stencil or the image to line up the things. So I'm just getting it nice and lined up here with the, with the leaves. <laughs> you can't call it greenery because I am not going to do them green. So I'm calling them leaves because leaves can be any color. <laughs> All right, so I am going to start with, actually, so uh, for my first run at this stencil, I am not going to use the tiny brush. I am going to use the half inch just to get the first color in here because um, I feel like it will go a little bit quicker. So just for the sake of time, I am going to use the half inch brush on the warm buff, which is the first layer of color. We're going to come in. We're going to add another layer of color to give these a little bit more depth since each uh, layer just has the one stencil. I feel like it's a little bit easier to get a little bit quicker coverage for this first layer with the little bit larger brush. Welcome to everybody just joining us. Totally fine. You're just catching on. I have, I've only really stamped and heat embossed the image. I'm just starting with the stenciling. Um, but of course, this will be available for replay right after I end the live stream. So you could always go back and watch the beginning part if you'd like. Cherry, I so I think the thing that I love about uh, the Brutus Mineral Guild is just the color of gold that it is. Um, I think that it's not really to me. It's not really any different than any other embossing powder out there. I think pretty much all of them are are good quality. I just really happen to like the the shade of uh, the shade of gold that this one is. So it's just my kind of my reasoning behind my preference on that one. Okay. All right, so I think that is a good start. So now we are going to grab, I'm gonna grab the smaller brush, the more detailed brush, and I'm gonna add a little bit more color uh, with dough. Oh, Kathy, I love that you are crafting along today. I think that's super fun. Don't let it be stressful, just let it be fun. I think it, that is gonna be great. And I would love for you to share your creation with me um, whenever, when you're done. I would love to see it. All right, so I'm just using a small brush and I hopefully my hand doesn't just totally get in the way, but you'd be able to see it once I reveal, once I lift the stencil up. But I'm just trying to add a little bit of added gradation into the leaves here. And with how small some of these stencil openings are, 
I really feel like I have more control over being able to do that with uh, the smaller brush. So it's a real great feature of these smaller ones. Oh, thank you, Anne. Love to hear that you're excited about the event. So we welcome. Hey. Well, that's funny, Tabitha. <laughs> they are definitely pretty. Um, but definitely, I think it's maybe challenge yourself to use them because they also are as pretty as they are, they're also super helpful when they make ink blending really, really nice and fun. So definitely would uh, maybe challenge yourself to use them, see, to break them out. And then, yeah, Heather makes a good point there. It actually looks really pretty with the ink on them. So I think they're prettier once they're all inked up and you can see what color is on your brush. So just, just another note, like they're they're really pretty when they're pristine and fresh and clean. But I agree with Heather, they're being made to me anyway, be even prettier with all of the ink color on them once they've been used a little bit. It's something to keep in mind as well. Okay. Oh, Pamela, love to hear that. We're so happy that you're excited. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay. All right. So once we are done with this first layer, let's just that clean a little bit. It's just a dry cloth that I'm just cleaning it up. I'll clean the stencils a little more extensively later, but just look at how great that turned out. These will uh, soften a little bit. The ink's a little bit bold right now. It will soften a little bit once um, it has a chance to kind of set and uh, basically dye the ink. Okay, but I do love how I was able to get some good gradation in there with these smaller brushes. So I'm gonna move on to stencil two. And we are going to get it just lined up with the opening here. Like my bottom's a little off there. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Donna. I hope that you start feeling better soon. Great. There we go. Man, I was struggling there for a minute, wasn't I? All right. So we're going to start with the first shades we are using. So it'll be my lighter shades here. So that is Coral Reef, Leprechaut, and Lemon Whip. So um, I think I did previously, I guess I'm doing a mixture here. For the, the first layer, I am going to go in with a little bit bigger um, brushes, my, my half inch brushes, just so I can get a good start on the color. I feel like maybe I need to re-ink my ink cubes. One here, and now I want them to be down here. All right, so there is. All right, so I'm pretty sure I used persimmon last on this one. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick. You've maybe have seen it before if you frequent here, but this is just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to buff my brush out so that uh, I don't get any persimmon in my apricot because they're a bit different in terms of shades of orange. So I am going to just clean that out. And then now it's dry and we are ready to go on the next set here. So I want this flower to be a little multicolor here. And then we're gonna start oranges here. 
down into here. Very top of that flower. And then we are going to move on to lemon. And finish off the first layer. Yellow here as well. Okay, so the first layer of our flowers is done, but I am not quite ready to be fully done yet. We are going to remove these lighter shades. Oh, you're welcome, Allison. And then we're going to add in our, our deeper shades here. So that's passion fruit, persimmon, and marigold. And I've been, I have been cleaning these brushes with a little bit of alcohol since basically all year. And uh, they, they work exactly the same as they have. So um, they haven't been hurt in my current experience at all. Okay, so let's start with passion fruit. So I'm going to grab my little brush here. I'm going to get some passion fruit in here. And this is where... I'm going to just work on applying just a little bit of gradation. Just add a little bit of detail. Don't want them, I don't want it to be over, overly done. Because I do want some of that lighter layer to show underneath. Yes, Heather makes a good point. I've never like soaked them in alcohol. Just spraying that little bit on my cloth and wiping them out where it stays primarily just on the very tip of your bristle to get out any of that excess ink that's sitting there. Has, hasn't seemed to hurt at all, but definitely Heather makes a good point. I wouldn't soak them in alcohol by any means. Ooh. I have a little down here. It's also coral reef. All right, so then we are going to move on to persimmon. Just grabbing my darker orange brush out here. Okay. So let's add a little bit onto this flower. Um. Terry, this is actually an ink stand. It's um, from our friends at the ink stand. So this is not a Pink Fresh Studio product. But that ink cube holder I showed you at the beginning when I was pulling my ink cubes out, that's, 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 that's our ink cube holder. Yeah. I can add a little persimmon in here. I think I'm good with persimmon. Finally, we just need to add a little marigold into these little flowers here. Oh. Some of these flowers are real small, so oh. it's hard to get a gradation on those, but I'm doing the best I can. And for the most part, those ones end up being just a little darker, and that's okay. All right, I I'm feeling good about how this turned out. So let's take a look and see. And look at that. Turned out lovely. Very fall feeling. There we go. Let me get these closed up so I don't dip my hand or something in it. I'm just going to do a little desk thing up real quick. So give me a second while I do that. Okay. So I will clean these stencils a little bit more extensively when I end the live stream, but for now I'm just going to set them aside. When I clean them, I do clean them with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol that I keep in a spray bottle on my desk. 
and then just wipe them clean. Um, and there's that. So I was asking what they prefer, ink cubes or full-size pads. And I think both have their place. Chose ink cubes today because everything was pretty small that I was blending. And um, here are the browns I used. Lisa, I used warm buff and dough, or at least, sorry, warm buff and dough. Um, but when you're blending a bigger area, uh, I do like full size ink pads for that. And when you're, if you're stamping with ink, I do pre also prefer full size for that. So I think you do have to base it on budget, size, room, you know, what you have in terms of room. Totally kind of up to you on that. I see a reason for, I see good pros and cons for both. So um, I used ink cubes today because I knew I was blending in small spaces. I knew I had quite a few colors I wanted you to be able to see. So uh, there's that. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy cut out really quickly. Oh, it's like, here's the dice over here. All right, so we've got a die for cutting out the flowers. And then we also have a die for cutting out three of the main sentiments on here. We will come back to that because I am going to use one of these sentiments, but I kind of want to play around with the design first. And before I decide on which sentiment I'm going to use exactly, I cut in place and then I can get the stitch down on here. <laughs> Thanks. I, I do like to clean as I go. Sometimes my area is a complete disaster. I will be completely honest with you guys on that. I wouldn't say I'm always a complete neat, neat to knit. But in general, uh, I do clean as I go uh, so that it's not a daunting task afterwards. Let's see here. Taking my time to get this guy nice and lined up here. Okay. And then I'm going to tape it down and run it through my machine. Okay. I feel like that keeps shifting on me a little bit. So maybe I need one more piece of tape down here just to make sure it stays in place. All right. I'm going to run it through my machine and I will be right back. All right. Hopefully, ooh, really sticking. So I wanted to be careful with the top of my image. There we go. Let's get this off. This is one of those ones where it cuts it out so nicely, but it does kind of stick into your the negative a bit. So just want to be gentle with that. And I think most of the pieces stuck behind in the dry, so we're good there. Probably use this with sentiment. So I don't think I have any chads that I need to poke out, but I am going to give my dye a good whack and try to get most of them out here. So I did that. There's some of the smaller ones that stuck around. There we go. Let me grab this guy and see if I can get them pooped out. Hmm. I don't know, Diane. I, my, the die seemed to line up fine for me. So I'm probably just... Um, Line, I don't know, uh, just take your time to line it up, maybe tape it in multiple places. That's the only thing I can think of. I think maybe all of them smacked out. I don't even have to do that. All right, so I did want to show you guys something because I did a little test run last night because I wasn't so sure about the colors, but I did it with gold pearl and uh, 
I'll make a card out of this one probably when the live is over or not live or maybe this evening and then probably put them together so you can see a comparison. But um, as you can tell, this is a little bit softer already because it's had time to sit. But, um, just kind of fun, huh? We're going to stick. I wanted to go with a little bit deeper gold for today's card. So it show up a little bit better. All right, so I have some pre die cutting done. That's I've already done. So first things first, we're going to add a couple of our fall leaves tucked in here. Um, so we've got those already pre-cut. Now something I wanted to mention, these are super intricate and I they cut perfectly fine in my die cut machine. I didn't need any additional shams or anything, but if you're struggling to get these to cut out nicely, um, bubble mailer technique is a good one, or you can of course use your metal shim, but I just wanted to point that out on that. <clears throat> and then I also pre-cut my panel and my little frame here. And I did that with our mini slimline essentials bundle. This is the diagonal stitched panels. And the way that I cut the frame is I just used the largest outer and then the next inner that doesn't have a design on it. And you just use those first two dies together to create my little frame. And I just cut it from some gold pearl card stuff. So these are actually also on part of our sale this week. So we have 30% off all slimline dies going on this week. And this bundle happens to be in it. So um, if you're interested in grabbing this bundle or any slimline products, uh, you just have to make sure that you use the code SLIM30 uh, when you uh, when you when you check out. So just a just a thing. If you want to check out all of that, you can find the information on our website for that promo. Have a good day, Roxanne. Is Tracy here? I don't think. Oh, there's Tracy. Hi. <laughs> okay. So for my panel here, I'm going to just do a quick design here. I just want to make sure I got to figure I'm not sure what sentiment I want to use yet. So that is where we're at. I think my card is going to be wrinkled like this. So I think we're going to add one set of leaves there and one set of leaves down here. This one I'll probably have to trim quite a bit, but this is just to get an idea for a sentiment. Now, where is the stain set? Here we go. So I'm, I think I'm really enjoying this. I'm humbled and grateful sentiment, and I think I can make perfect little spot for it to go here. Um, there is, so yeah, I'm going to use the humbled and grateful sentiment. So I'll grab, I forgot to grab my mini Misty. So let me grab that really quick. Okay. We definitely, I was at a crop fifty weekend with some friends. We definitely had a really fun weekend full of laughs. <laughs> Some of them are here, are here on the live today. All right. Great. So since there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get the sentiment stamped. I think, I think I'm going to grab one of our darker browns. I think it's going to look really nice in brown versus black. We'll keep with that warm tone of this card. Yeah, just gotta find it here. All right. Let's go with espresso for the sentiment. Julie. I know whenever I when I said slim 30, I actually thought the same thing. So we're in good company. <laughs> All right. So I, when I stamp in dye ink, I like to stamp it a couple of times. I don't think I ever get a very good impression the first time. So oh, actually, actually it was pretty good. I am going to stamp it one more just for good measure. Okay. 
Oh, yuck, that got a little too bold. So I think I'm gonna flip this over and try again. Just move that into place here. Hold on. I do not like how bold that got. So maybe I will just stick. Oh, sorry, I might have bumped the camera with my head. I am gonna stamp it one more time and just do it once because that got to be a little bit too bold for me. So we'll just do that again. Okay. You stay in face here, friend. It's funny, it didn't shadow at all, but it just got too thick. So maybe I pressed too hard too. I don't know, but here, we're gonna just make sure we can get it nice and nice and good. And we're gonna do one impression. There we go. I'm leaving it at that because I think it looks good and I like that it kept it nice and crisp. Thank you. Glad that you're joining us and absolutely. Uh, the replay will be great and you can maybe craft along with it if you have, since it seems you have some of these photos or products, not photos. That's Leah. Okay. Feeling good about that. So now we can go ahead and die cut the sentiment here. And then get to assembling. I am going to go ahead and grab just my little deck. Be here. Come down. Oops. And then, of course, we have this fantastic eye. We're cutting it out. Yeah, for reference, I know that um, I mean, Heather, we've we've kind of been we've started uh, mentioning the reason why a few of our shades of ink have been out of stock for so long is we've had a couple of quality issues with um, our reorders, so we haven't been able to accept the shipments, um, and they've had to be redone. So that's a reason why you've seen. Uh, so many or you know just a few of our shades just not in stock at all for a while uh that is the reason why um fingers crossed that this next time everything will be all good right i'm going to also cut out a couple more layers of this sentiment just to give it some just for stacking purposes let's see here i think i can get two i don't think i'm gonna be able to get two that's okay i think i have another piece of scrap paper around here i think i'm just going to be able to get one i'm going to trim this down I would like one more ear here. So let me find a piece of scrap cardstock. Give me one sec. All right, here we go. Well, thanks, Rita. Appreciate hearing that. Mm 
And that should be good. So out. There we have it. Okay. And I think I totally forgot to mention at the beginning of this that all of the products that I'm using today are linked in the video description. So um, if you're looking for them, you can easily find everything I've used. For. All right, let's go ahead and pop out the cats and let's get this stacked and adhered together. Just this one last little piece here. There we go. Ooh. I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue here and there. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Sorry, I'm a little distracting. <laughs> All right, one more layer here. It's sticking to me. Apparently, oh goodness. I'm not that glue on my finger. Thank you, Allison. Okay, we have our sentiment ready to go. So it's nice and stacked. So I can just glue it directly down. It will still have a little bit of dimension to it. All right, let's start getting this card put together. Okay. First things first, we will just glue this guy down. I'm just gonna use some tape runner. Just glue it or tape runner directly to the panel. Since I'm using foam on the frame, here I can leave out that. Just go ahead and We'll carry this directly to the card base. That one. There we go. That should be good. Thank you, June. That's kind of you. <laughs> it's funny, Rita. Good. It's a good way to stall, for sure. Getting to hang out. Pretty centered, not worried if it's not perfect. And then I did go ahead and put little thin foam strips on my frame here just for the sake of time. And so you didn't have to painstakingly watch me put foam, foam strips on the back of this tiny thin little frame here. I agree, Sherry. Especially some of our sentiments are pretty, pretty thin. I feel like this would be pretty hard to add little thin foam strips on the back of it. So, okay, this is where lining up, so we want this to be lined up as perfectly as possible with ground. Oh, there we go, it's pretty painless. Okay, we'll have the start of our base here. And then, all right, I'm just gonna, Buff my flowers here a little bit just to give them a little added dimension for when I go to glue them down. It doesn't have to be too much, but this is just going to go there. I think I have room. I'm going to go ahead and actually adhere the sentiment down so that I don't accidentally place any of these leaves or anything over top of it get my sentiment placement first, so then I can work around it and make sure that it won't be covered up. Well, thank you, Holly, I appreciate that. Yes. 
make sure that this is not really crooked. And maybe push it down a little bit. There we go. Thank you, Mrs. Ms. Pam. Donna, it's cooler weather here too, and I am loving it. Uh, don't get me wrong, my husband and I took up paddleboarding this summer and we just love it, but I am definitely also loving the cooler temps now. <laughs> we are uh, much cooler temperatures today um, and we've been seeing some cooler temperatures, which is so nice. I'm definitely ready. And this little guy is gonna just click in here. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and get some glue. I'm just gonna for now add glue at the bottom. I will probably reinforce the flower or reinforce this a little bit when the live is over in a couple of areas. But I do want to be able to lift it up to tuck these leaves into place. So for now, I'm just going to glue it at the bottom so that it doesn't keep moving on me. And then uh, but I'm going to leave it so I can still lift it a little bit to be able to glue my my fall leaf dies into place here. So I'll probably trim that leaf up there. I feel like that looks like a nice placement. Oh, thank you, Bo. And with this guy, I'll probably reinforce the leaves maybe with a little bit of foam dots here and there. But I'm gonna just start with that skinny little um, spine of the leaf to get it into place here. And then once I, I may pop like, I'll probably trim excess piece off there. And then, okay, this guy, I glued down a little bit too much, I think, because I want this to, okay, I did glue it. So let's, Pull this up a little. So, and I think this guy I'm going to need to trim a little bit. This is where I get a little quiet because I'm just kind of fussing around. I can figure out where I want to put this. Okay, so I am going to trim this guy off here. Wait, I may, I'm gonna trim all the way down to here. And we are just gonna use this little guy. Come in here. There we go. Yeah. Tucked in here, and there's already some glue under there. So I'm just going to use that existing glue. And OK, there we go. I don't know if I want to add this one in. Let's see what I think here. It just be a little bit much. It's a little much. So I think I'm just going to leave these off. And we will call this good. Great. I'm going to go ahead and snip this off because it's. I'm going to bring me up here. You know what? I want to snip this guy at the frame. But tucks into that frame right there. Perfect. It's much better. I'm not going to use these. I could probably save them and use them on a different card project. So let's go ahead and finish up with some embellishment, embellishment here. I think, just gotta find it. I want to use 
you know what? I had put some jewels, but I think I'm going to pivot so that what I put in the video description is not correct. I'm going to pivot over and I'm going to do sparkling champagne curls. Need a little tray. So ignore the, uh, ignore the embellishments that I listed in the video description. I'll update it. Um, later, a little shortly after this is over with the correct thing. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> there we go. I think these will look really pretty with the pearls. Oops, I should put this back on and I'm probably causing a little. Well, I'm gonna make sure I don't clog that guy up. All right, let's see here. What I um, little trio right here. And maybe a nice trio over here. <laughs> it's a sunny day in your neighborhood, huh, Barb? Prairie over here. Let me see. Do I want to add any more? Hmm. Do I want any on the flowers? I don't think I do, actually. So that one's kind of nice. Maybe just on a couple of them, right at their little bases. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Hi, Sue. That one there. I think that's too much up there anyway. Maybe just one more right here. Nope, it's too much. So maybe over here. There we go. I think we're gonna call that good. Are you guys away? Thank you, Helen. That's really kind of you. I appreciate that. Goodness, hey now, hey now. Last thing over here, and we are done. Done with our card for today. Well, that is my card. I'm looking at ending right on time. So here is my fall, my fall themed mini slim line using or humbled and grateful. Sweet. I hope that you guys enjoyed it today. I know I enjoyed. Oh, what's the one that come from? I missed one. Let's get that input on real quick so I don't forget. Oh, I missed something. <laughs> there we go. Got it. There we go. Rogue gem. Rogue, I guess rogue pearl. There we go. All right. So let me get this camera switched around. Heather will be picking a winner shortly. All right. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining me, Fuse. I uh, had a wonderful time. I hope you like my fall themed card. I will stop it soon. If you want to make a card with the other version that looks a little bit softer, with the softer um, embossing or excuse me, embossing powder. All right, congratulations to Mary Mathis. You have won today's fifteen dollars gift card code.
Heather has given you all the instructions in that comment there. Um, but uh, just email me. My email is leah at pinkforstudio.com to claim your prize. There's no H on the end of my name. So it's just L-E-A. And uh, give me you know two to three business days to be able to uh, get uh, to be able to get that gift card back to you. All right. We uh, do not have a scrapbooking live this week, so I think this is it. I think I am it. Um, we will be back next week with with both. Um, and other than that. And that's everything that I have for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy your week and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.